Hey folks, this is Michael Mann, Michael Mann Security Services. Uh, welcome to Security Assessments and Surveys. Just a quick presentation on what the difference between a survey and assessment is. We get questions on this all the time, especially uh, from churches that are looking for uh, assistance with funding. And so I want to go over the difference between um, what, these, uh, what these two reports uh, entail and what they really are. Okay. All right. So get a hold of us, uh, contact at michaelmanssecuritysearch.com, or you can get us at mman at fbctn.org. You can always give me a call, 615-956-3912. Okay, so we're going to cover the security assessment, security surveys. This is just going to take us a couple minutes. All right, quick video. So we uh, we hear we get, uh, we'll get requests or someone will ask us. A lot of times we'll request and we'll say, hey, we want a security assessment. Or they may say we want a security survey and they don't know the difference. And so we'll go in and ask questions. And so again, we want to provide the difference or really an answer to what, what the difference between the two uh, reports are. So the assessment, an assessment itself is an evaluation of your facility's physical protection system or PPS. Now the assessment is conducted or should be conducted or really it will have to be conducted by a security professional who is trained and certified to conduct that type of work because the assessment's very different than a survey, okay? So the survey covers a number of things. It's going to cover the assets that you need to protect at your facility. It's going to cover or it's going to discuss threats that can compromise those assets. It is also going to identify vulnerabilities or security system weaknesses or weaknesses in that physical protection system. And it's also going to provide suggestions for improvement, right? So when we talk about the security professional that conducts this, because if we go back and we look to see everything that's, you know, that is provided in the report, a list of assets, or they're going to identify those assets, looking at what could compromise those assets or what threatens your facility or house of worship or whatever, the system weaknesses in the current system, and things that need to be changed to make your physical protection system more effective, this really requires a security professional, not a former law enforcement officer or a current law enforcement, uh, law enforcement officer, a security officer, and not that, the, not that that background is an assist, but what we're talking about somebody uh, that has professional experience conducting security assessments. They have conducted, if it were me, and I tell customers this a lot in churches, I would like to see someone that's conducted security assessments in multiple environments, not just one environment, but multiple, because that gives them a large array of experience to see different things and how things work and also can help with your assessment and with helping with um, improving your physical protection system. When we start to look at certification, I would, I would look at ASIS, the American Society for Industrial Security. It is a global security organization that provides professional security uh, certification in both security management, physical security, investigations, uh, and then just basic security operations. And so when we start to talk about assessments, the ASIS physical security professional or that PSP certification shows a person's subject matter expertise in three uh, elements, and that is, one, in physical security planning, uh, two, physical security or risk assessments. It gets very detailed into those assessments, and the design and evaluation of physical protection systems. So it's a very good uh, professional certification, in fact, one of the few that shows the expertise in conducting assessments. Um, and then I would want them trained in assessment methodologies. There's a different uh, or there's an array of security assessment methodologies that are out there. The majority of them come from the government background or from a government background. And so we're looking at Department of Defense, U.S. Department of Energy or National Nuclear Security Administration, DHS, Department of Homeland Security and other government agencies that provide assessment methodologies. So we're talking about people with professional experience who've been trained and certified and done that work. Not that those methodologies are necessarily going to tell you what you need to do to your house of worship or production site, but if they've been trained and certified in those methodologies, it means they've probably done the assessments and they have experience using some type of methodology. Again, not that they have to use that methodology, but the experience 
really helps. There's a couple of other um, private um, organizations that provide assessment methodologies. And so if you have any questions about what that looks like, you can always call us or email us, and we'll be uh, happy to share that with you in an email. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the security survey, which is what the majority of people really do, and they don't even know it. So a security survey is just basically an on-site examination of a facility or building, and it's used to, to determine the present security status of your site. So it tells you where you are, like what, you know, what that present status is. And also it is designed to identify like vulnerability. So it's going to, it's going to find vulnerabilities. And then it's going to determine what the present security status is. There's no threat assessment involved or, you know, trying to determine what the threats are. Uh, there's no asset identification in the survey. Um, and it doesn't provide um, any kind of suggestions for improvement, not normally. Okay. So a security survey is, is usually used in a, an environment where there's, uh, where there's compliance. So if it's if I'm a chemical facility and I'm being uh, mandated to have certain physical uh, protection uh, systems in because of chemicals, chemicals of interest we have on site, and I'm regulated by the Department of Homeland Security under 6 CFR Part 27, I might have somebody come in and do a security survey to come in and make sure that I've got all those elements in place. Like, do I have cameras at my perimeter? Do I have a fence? Do I have some sort of a guard system? So I want to look to make sure, and, and a lot of times this is kind of like a checklist, they'll come in and just make sure that that facility in a survey is meeting those compliance uh, compliance um, uh, requirements, yes or no, okay? Again, they focus on vulnerabilities only. And the survey can be used as a standalone process. And normally people that aren't trained in assessments they can do a survey and they use that as a standalone and mo most of the time it's just for compliance. Or you can use the survey as part of evaluating the overall effectiveness of a physical protection system. So you can use the survey as a tool in the assessment and it's, and it's important because I can go through and start looking to see what's, what's there, what's present, but it doesn't provide the assessment. And it, again, it doesn't, you know, the survey does not tell me what threats are present. You know, it doesn't provide any kind of uh, suggestions for improvement. Um, and it doesn't tell me what assets I need to protect. So that's what the security survey is. So the difference between, again, the assessment and the survey, the assessment is a complete evaluation. It can also include the threat assessment. It also does include suggestions for improvement or recommendations for improvement. The survey really is a compliance tool. A lot of times it's a checklist. And it's really to look to ensure that you're meeting some sort of a regulatory requirement or your facility is. And it will identify site vulnerabilities. Okay. So those are the difference between the two. And when, you know, when we look at the requirements, I've already really covered this, but uh, I want to talk about this with the surveys. A lot of times this is assigned to a responsible party. What I see a lot or what I used to see, I was in the nuclear fuel industry for a long time, uh, directing and developing physical protection programs. And especially chemical sites where there's not a full-time security manager, you know, a lot of times a survey to make sure that they were meeting basic requirements uh, that had been handed down to them from a government organization, very specifically Department of Homeland Security, they would have surveys as part of their continuous um, improvement process. And maybe an engineer in environmental health and safety would go through and do the survey. So they would assign it to a responsible party. Uh, you know, there, there does need to be some kind of requirement of some knowledge of physical security. And of course, if you're in those industries as an engineer, then there is, you know, there probably is some. Uh, and normally that was a checklist. So those are some basic requirements for, for a survey. But again, the difference between the two, that assessment is going to evaluate the system. Really, all the survey is doing is making sure that you're meeting very specific requirements. Uh, again, it's not going to assess or evaluate. For houses of worship, for those folks in churches, synagogues, or uh, mosques that are watching, um, some of you guys, maybe you've taken uh, advantage of the NSGP or you're looking at it, which is the nonprofit security grant, uh, grant program. Uh, if you look at what your SAA, SAA requires, if you look at the paperwork, it does to get that funding, it does require an assessment. Now, the wording is a little bit loose, and so it says a vulnerability site survey. However, it does say that includes observations and considerations. And that's a big part of, you know, obviously. Are receiving 
uh, that grant. So it does actually require an assessment, not just a survey. So if you're going to try to take advantage of that nonprofit security grant program and you've been in contact with the SAA, uh, then you, uh, you know, you probably know you should know that that's going to require an assessment, not just a survey. If you're going to, you know, try to get a chance to get some of that funding. Okay. Um, if you're looking to do that, you know, if you're a house of worship and you're looking to do that, uh, Michael Mann Security Services provides those site assessments. Uh, by no means can I, can I guarantee that you're going to get funding. Uh, I have nothing to do that. But what I can tell you is that we can provide a professional assessment. Uh, that more than likely your SAA is going to accept. Uh, and reasons for that, we are board certified in physical security. So I'm um, a PSP, we're board certified in security management as a CPP, trained and certified in multiple assessment methodologies, uh, methodologies to include Carver, uh, a RAM or risk assessment methodology from the U.S. Department of Energy, APR, the American Petroleum Institute. Uh, I am a SEPTED practitioner or certified, um, um, you know, practicing uh, CPD, uh, SIPTED uh, provider. Uh, and then I've conducted hundreds of risk and vulnerability and threat assessments on houses of worship, nuclear weapons complexes, commercial nuclear fuel fabrication facilities, chemical facilities, business complexes, manufacturing facilities, and residential security programs, very specifically for executive protection. Again, we cannot guarantee that you're going to get funding. I don't have anything to do with that. But what I can guarantee is you're going to have a professional site assessment that that SA is probably going to accept just based on experience and based on the content of what that assessment would look like. Hey folks, Michael Mann from Michael Mann Security Services. Thank you so much for watching our content. Hey, if you want to get a hold of us, you've got questions, here's how you can do that. You can give me a call at 615-956-3912. You can always get us at Safe with Man, and we're going to answer that as quick as possible. Okay. Or, folks, we have a free YouTube channel. There's a library of videos on physical protection, providing emergency response, security assessments, you name it. We've got a year's worth of video and training on our YouTube channel and is absolutely free. And that's at Safe with Man. You can get us at michaelmansecurityservices.com. That's the website address. Shoot us a message. You can also get us at contact at michaelmansecurityservices.com or you can get us at scott at michaelmansecurityservices.com and we will email you back as quick as possible. And remember, it is about prevention, not response.